Today, we are going to discuss about how to read the T table. One of the previous lectures, I discussed how to read the Z table or Z table. Before starting the lecture, I must mention that nowadays we have statistical softwares and computers, so we don't use these tables. But to understand the basis of statistics, it is important to understand how to read the T table. In the previous lecture, I discussed the difference between the Z distribution and T distribution. Z distribution states the probabilities within the Z distribution and T table states the probabilities within the T distribution. But specific thing is in T distribution, if you can remember, depending on the degrees of freedom, we get different shapes. When you increase the sample size to infinity, it will approximate the exact Z distribution. So, this is a part of T table. This is not the full T table. I have written here a part of T table. In T table, in the first column, we have something called degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom means number of free observations or number of independent observations. We will discuss what do you mean by degrees of freedom in another lecture. But keep in mind, this is something related to your sample size. If you have 100 individuals in one sample, 99 of them are independent observations. Because if you know the mean of 100 individuals, if you know the value of 99 of the individuals, you can easily predict the next one as you know the mean. So, the final one is not an independent observation. So, that's why we call degrees of freedom. So, if your sample size is 100, degrees of freedom is 99. But that depends. If you have two samples, the way you are calculating the degrees of freedom is different. In chi-square test or many other tests, the method of calculating the degrees of freedom is different. For the moment, keep in mind, this column states the degrees of freedom. And this part or the body of the table, this part, these things are T values. In your test, in your hypothesis testing, you, you have to apply the T test. Once you apply the T test, you will get something called test statistic. So that is the T value. So you will get the T value. You have to compare your T value in this table and we have in this part we have the probabilities values actually they are p values if you can remember your knowledge in z test if you are interested in 5% rejection region we give value 1.96 so this is the rejection region either side in such case we know that the p value is 0.05 so, p-value is bit complicated concept. If you need to learn it again, please go and watch my video on p-value. So, now here, these are p-values. In the introduction to hypothesis testing lecture, I discussed that t-value is used for comparing means. For example, assume that we need to compare two groups, group A and group B. Now, we have a mean here x bar a and we have the mean here x bar b we need to know whether these two are different if these two are different we inference that mu a and mu b are different that is a different story we need to know whether the means of the two populations are different or not what you do is you do a two sample t test two sample t test i will discuss in one of the next few lectures. For that, to compare these two means, we can apply t-test and you will get a t-value. What you have to do is, you have to compare this specific t-value in this area. Okay, think that we have 51 individuals in this group and 51 individuals in the other group. Now we know that as there are 51 individuals in this group, 50 of them are independent observations. And this group also, 50 of them are independent observations. So what is the degrees of freedom? 
degrees of freedom is the number of independent observation. So, we can get this by n1 plus n2 minus 2 because we know that 50 individuals are here, 50 individuals are here. So, the total degree of freedom is 100. Let's assume that we have got a t value of 2. So, our t value is 2. Now, in order to reject or accept the null hypothesis, from that to decide what happens to our hypothesis, we need to know whether this t value is in the rejection region or not. How to do that? Our t value is 2 and the degrees of freedom is 100. So, we need to select the exact degrees of freedom from the degrees of freedom column. Now, it is 100. In a full t table, you will get all these values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like that. Now, it is this. You have to compare the t value in this row. Now, it is 2. Where is 2? Now, you can see in this row, 2 should be somewhere here because 2 is in between 1.98 and 2.36. Now you can get the p value easily. Now what is the p value? Now to select p value you need to determine whether your hypothesis is two tailed or your hypothesis is one tailed test. Assume that this is two tailed test. If it is two tailed, two tailed p values are in this row this row and one tail p values are in the upper row. As this is two tail test, our p value is in between 1.98 and 2.36. Our p value should be in between these two values in two tailed row. So, our p value must be in between 0 0.02 to 0 0.05. If the rejection region is 5%, if you have put your rejection region at 5%, you need to find out what is the value here. In a Z distribution, we know that it is 1.96, but in this 5% rejection region, in the T value is, you can see, it's, this is 5% one, 0 0.05. So, with regards to 100 degrees of freedom, 1.98. So, please understand that the cutoff value is 1.98. You can easily understand that 2 is higher than 1.98. So, we can reject our null hypothesis and we can accept our hypothesis that the two groups are different. And in other words, we can reject the null hypothesis just by comparing the p-value. So, p-value you can understand that it should be in between 0 0.02 to 0 0.05 according to this t-table. So, it is definitely p is less than 0 0.05. So, we reject the null hypothesis. This is how you calculate the t-value. How to do the t-test? Please watch the next few lectures. Now, please understand, even though we say that the p-value is less than 0 0.05, nowadays, we can get the exact p-value. For example, now we know that the p-value is in between 0 0.02 to 0 0.05, whether it is 0 0.025, 0 0.03, 0 0.04. What is the exact p-value we can get by using computer statistical packages. And another important thing is, I told you when the degrees of freedom goes to infinity. So, this is infinity. If you look at your t-table, please download the t-table and watch the t-table. So, every t-table in the degrees of freedom column, the last value is infinity. I told you t distribution will be approximated into z distribution when the sample size is at infinity. Here when your degrees of freedom is 100, you can see that 1.98 is the cutoff value at 5%. When the sample size is infinity, you can see the cutoff is 1.96, which we discussed in the previous lectures in relation to z distribution. Another important thing is, we have highlighted that Z-test is for higher samples and T-test is for lower samples. Before this computer packages come, we had a cutoff level of 30 if the 
sample size is more than 30, we go for the Z test. If the sample size is less than 30, we go for the T test. But nowadays, we don't need to go for the Z test because we don't have the sample size infinity. We can go for the exact T distribution. We can find out what is the exact T distribution at any sample size easily by using statistical software. Thank you very much.